the ultimate ascension tool. Hello, my name is Randall Monk, and during this brief time we have together, I'm going to share some tools I've used and some tools that you may find helpful on this path of ascension we're all on. I'm going to go to my computer now and share those tools with you. The Ultimate Ascension Tool Practical Applications I'll be talking about the following topics. What is Ascension? Ascending with Love Transforming Judgment with Love Healing with Love Blessing Food with Love Sleeping with Love Overcoming fear with love. Healing Mother Earth with love. Protecting your open heart with love. Love and your energy signature. The ultimate sanctuary. What is ascension? Let's start with that question. Ascension is simply the process of increasing one's vibration. In other words, moving to a higher frequency. Ascended beings are vibrating at a much higher rate than those who have not ascended yet. I'm going to mention a few ways to increase your frequency. There are several ways to increase your vibration. However, from personal experience, I have found that the most effective one is employing the frequency of love in one's life. There are several ways to employ love in your life, and that is what I'll be sharing. Practical uses for the energy of love. As I previously stated, ascension is a matter of increasing one's vibration, thereby moving up to a higher dimensional level. Actually, we move in increments, so that we are moving up to the next sublevel within the dimension we are in until we reach the top sublevel and move to the lowest sublevel of the next dimension. Because love carries a very high vibration, a very high frequency, it is very effective in raising our vibration. And there are numerous ways to employ the wonderful energy of love. I'm going to share several practices I use to employ love in my life. Hopefully you'll find one or more of them useful and put them to use in your life. Transforming judgment with love. Many of us wonder why we keep judging people. Well, the answer is simple. We are human beings, and as human beings we are subject to human foibles. When I find myself judging another person, I realize what is happening immediately, and I use it as a trigger to do something positive for that person. I instantly draw in energy through the back portal of my heart and my crown chakra and send out love through the front portal of my heart to that person. I may also find something to appreciate about them, like the color of their eyes, their hair, or the spark of the Creator within them. I find something to appreciate about them. Healing with love. There are many individuals who are less fortunate than we are. No matter where I am, if I see a person limping or having a difficult time, I draw in energy through the back portal of my heart and my crown, my crown chakra, and I bring forth the feeling of love as I send energy, healing energy, through the front portal of my heart to them. Blessing food with love. I say something like, I bless and energize this food and bring it to my vibration or higher, seeing the violet flame blazing up around the food as I do so, and I feel gratitude for the food. I then bring forth uh, the feeling of love. I send love to that food as well. So I may say something like, I bless and energize this food and bring it to my vibration or higher. And as I'm saying that, I see that violet flame blazing up around the food, removing any discordant energies in that food. And I feel gratitude as I'm doing that as well. And then I send love to that food. I bring in light to my crown in the back portal, like as I said before, and I send out love to the food. Sleeping with love. As I go to bed at night, when I'm lying in my bed, before I go to sleep, I bring forth a feeling of love, raising my vibration. If I get up and go to the bathroom during the night, I normally do the same thing before I go back to sleep. And this is a way to enter the dream state with a high vibration, moving into the sleep state with a high vibration. 
transforming fear with love. Managing fear so that it does not seize our life is of paramount importance. Because if we don't, it takes over and we're no longer able to move smoothly along the river of life. Fear will incapacitate us if we allow it to. With all the negative information in the news, many are feeling especially fearful. I suggest not watching negative news or reading negative news stories. Fear is a very low frequency, a low vibration that I recommend avoiding. You may be asking, well, how do I do that? Well, I'm going to answer that question very soon. We're all creators, and when we focus on something with emotion, we initiate the creative process. This will draw the energy of like vibration into our life. Therefore, the more we focus on fearful situations with emotion, the more likely we are to draw low-frequency energy and experiences into our lives. Our creative powers, and we all have them, can be used to create good fortune or misfortune. We create beneficial experiences with good thoughts and feelings. By the same token, we create unhealthy situations with negative thoughts and feelings. It's like two sides of the same coin. The universe is always delivering the sum total of our thoughts and feelings. That is how our world is created. We master ourself and our world by mastering our thoughts. As human beings, we're going to find ourselves having negative thoughts from time to time. That's just part of being a human being. The important thing is not to dwell in that energy, but to move out of it quickly to a higher vibration. The process I'm going to go over here in a moment, the technique I've used successfully for years to maintain a high frequency will help you to manage the process of transforming fear. So here it is. First I acknowledge the fear. Then I experience the fear. I embrace the fear, allowing it to dissipate. In many cases, it dissipates completely in a moment or two just by acknowledging and experiencing the feeling. This can take a moment or two or several minutes depending on the level of fear. If it's a deep-seated feeling, it may not totally dissipate at first, and that's okay. In this case, just move on to the next step. So the next step is to embrace love. Embrace the feeling of love. Allow the feeling of love to permeate your entire being. And if you find it difficult to bring forth the feeling of love, uh, you can think of a person, an animal, or a place in nature that you love. Anything to bring forth that feeling of love. Now, after you're comfortable with this method, you may be able to move directly from fear to love. As soon as you notice you're being fearful, bring forth that feeling of love to replace that feeling of fear. So here it is in a nutshell. Acknowledge and embrace the fear. Embrace the feeling of love. Replace fear with love. Another thing to consider is how we react to challenging situations we're confronted with. What happens to us is not as important as how we respond to what happens to us. When something unfortunate happens, we have a choice. We can react with negative emotions, or we can act with calm, peaceful, positive emotions. It's always our choice. The more peaceful and loving we are, the more we will experience peaceful and loving people and events in our life. Mastering our emotions, being in control of them, rather than allowing them to control us, is an essential skill to have on our earthly sojourn. It's helpful to practice on small issues that arise so that your response will be second nature when confronted with something major. And the more you practice, the easier it gets. Ideally, You'd want to be uh, embracing the energy of love as you go about your day, throughout your day. For example, if you're driving and another driver cuts you off, cuts in front of you, you have a choice. You can allow the situation to throw you off center and get angry, or you can smile, feeling good about being in control of your emotions rather than allowing others to influence how you feel. And another thing you may do, which I do sometimes, is 
I send that person love. I'll pull in that light, that light through my crown and the back portal and send out love to that individual. Just keep holding on to that feeling of love and you'll find it shifts your vibration, your frequency, uh, your feeling quite rapidly. Healing Mother Earth with Love. Now, this is a, a practice that was given by Archangel Michael through Rana Vizane, Rana, sacred scribe, who was a dear friend of mine. And it's uh, what we call the World Pyramid Meditation. It's, it's a brief, it's like, it's praying for Mother Earth, essentially, is what we're doing. So what we're doing is going up into a fifth dimensional pyramid. There's a World Pyramid that uh, is a fifth dimensional pyramid that Michael has told us about. And we enter the that pyramid and have a seat in one of the crystal chairs and you can do that just by your intention and this world pyramid has a place for everyone on the planet there's not enough seats it's huge and there's a violet flame beneath the holographic image of mother earth within the pyramid as well so what michael tells us is that we're sending energy to the earth to be used by the beings of light because they see the big picture. We don't really know what the big picture is, so we don't really know what's best for Mother Earth. But by doing this and sending this neutral energy to Mother Earth, the beings of light are able to redirect that energy, to focus that energy where it is needed. Now, place your consciousness in the sacred chamber of your heart. And envision yourself being encapsulated in a sphere of light, a protective sphere of light, protecting you as we're going to go into the higher dimensions. Envision yourself moving out of the back portal of your heart and having a seat in one of the crystal chairs in this huge pyramid. There is a capstone on the pyramid and it contains a spiraling rainbow ray of light which contains all the colors, virtues, and attributes of our Father, Mother, God. The walls radiate an inner light and there's a holographic image of the earth in the center of the pyramid. There is a magnificent clear quartz crystal hanging over Mother Earth. The crystal is faceted at both ends and the upper portion penetrates the capstone of the pyramid. And now you're going to be breathing in light through your crown chakra and the back portal of your heart as you inhale and then as you exhale you'll send out love to Mother Earth. Bringing in light and sending out love. Now, your love activates particles of lights to be gathered and used by angelic beings of light for the highest good of all. So now we're going to say before we do this, I ask for my highest good, the greatest good for all humanity, the earth, and all creation. I ask for my highest good. the greatest good for all humanity, the earth, and all creation. And now inhale as you bring in light through your crown and the back portal of your heart as well, and send out love through the front portal. Inhaling, bring in light through the crown and back portal. Exhaling as you send out love through the front portal. The light is coming in simultaneously through the crown and the back portal on the in-breath. Breathing in light, breathing out love, sending it to Mother Earth. Bringing in light, sending out love. Breathe in, breathe out. And now we're going to invoke the violet flame to transform discordant energies in and around Mother Earth. 
you can say something like this. I call upon the violet flame of transformation to cleanse, clear, harmonize, and balance any and all discordant energies in and around Mother Earth. Any and all discordant energies in and around Mother Earth. And see that violet flame blazing up around Mother Earth, cleansing, clearing, and balancing any and all discordant energies. And feel gratitude now, feeling gratitude for these transformative energies of the violet flame, for that feeds the flame. Gratitude feeds the flame. Okay, now you'll be exiting the pyramid and coming back onto the earth plane. Now exit the pyramid through your intention and come back onto the earth plane and your intention is to bring some of that fifth dimensional energy down with you, anchoring it on the earth plane. Good. And now moving on. Love and an open heart. Some people have been hurt by others and have closed their heart believing that it will protect them. While closing down one's heart may provide a limited form of protection, it's a double-edged sword because it prevents the individual from fully embracing and enjoying life. However, when you have an open heart and you're radiating love, that's all the protection you really need. And I'm going to talk about that now. Love and your energy signature. Our energy signature is determined by our vibration. Our vibration determines our quality of life. I suppose you've heard about the law of attraction. However, most of us probably think of the law of attraction as it relates to prosperity. All of our circumstances are the result of the law of attraction. Consider the quality of your relationships for a moment. Consider the quality of the people in your life, even people you don't know whose path you cross. Consider your health. Are you relatively healthy, unhealthy, or experiencing vibrant health? What level of prosperity are you experiencing in your life? These are all an indication of what kind of energy you are sending out to the world because what you send out comes back to you. You can call it cause and effect. You can call it like attracts like. Or you can call it karma. It all comes down to energy. The energy you are transmitting. If you want to know how you are doing and what kind of thoughts and feelings you entertain on a regular basis, just look at your life because it is mirroring your thoughts and feelings. What kind of people do you encounter? How is your health? If you want to be prosperous, are you? The good thing is that if you don't like what you see, you can change it by changing your thoughts. This is nothing new. Philosophers have been speaking about this for centuries, probably longer than that. When we entertain positive, life-affirming thoughts, we experience positive events in general. And when we are confronted with something challenging, we look for the good in it. If it is a problem, we focus on the solution rather than the problem because what we focus on is amplified and drawn to us. So again, your energy signature, that's your form of protection, and it's also determining your quality of life, the people and the circumstances in your life. 
Your energy signature is your protection or lack of protection because your vibration is subject to the law of attraction. In other words, you're attracting what you're sending out. The energy you send out comes back to you in the form of people and circumstances. The Supreme Creator is pure love. Therefore, love is the highest vibration we can have. Holding the frequency of love is the best form of protection you could have. It's your ultimate sanctuary.